A while back, I was thinking, you know what? We have maglev 3x3s and pyraminxes. I've made my own custom maglev square 1 and even 1x2x2. It's not going to be long until every WCA event is maglevitized. So before that happens, I thought, why not get ahead of the curve and be the first person to add maglev to some sort of WCA cube? My first choice was this cube. It's a puzzle I really enjoy. The mechanism's pretty simple, and there's lots of room to add maglev in these pieces. I was really hoping it would work out, and I can make the world's first maglev cube. That was, until Moyu sent me their brand new maglev cube. So, okay, I guess I'm not gonna be the first to get to the cube then, but I'm still not giving up hope for my little project. But I'm also not gonna give up this opportunity to try out Moyu's new top of the line Waylong cube. This thing actually looks pretty promising. Wow, this thing is fast and frictionless while still being pretty fluid. This might be the first real competitor to the GAN cube. If anything, it just feels uncontrollably fast right out of the box. I guess that's the power of maglev, but if you're a top cube solver, this might be exactly what you're looking for. It certainly has a lot of potential, so I would definitely check it out. Anyway, back to my quest to start a trend with maglev in some WCA cube. So since cube is obviously no longer an option, I'm gonna turn my attention to the next obvious choice, 2x2. Two two. It's a nice simple puzzle with lots of room on the inside, and most importantly, no one has made a maglev version yet. So I looked through my vast collection of 2x2s to find a worthy option to modify, and I think I've settled on the GAN 251M Air. It's the cheapest and the simplest of GAN's modern line of 2x2s, which means that it turns great, but it also doesn't have core magnets, which would obviously complicate the maglev process quite a bit. So now the question is, how do you take a regular old 2x2 and just add maglev to it? Well, no one's ever done it before, so I guess we're gonna be the first to find out. The first thing I'm gonna do is to take this cube completely apart. And if you're careful, you don't even need any special tools to do that on the GAN. I'm just gonna pop out a couple of corners, then grab an edge, and from here, the rest of it should basically just fall apart. And there we go. As with most 2x2s, we have one corner that's kind of locked into place, but with a little bit of force, we should be able to get this one out as well. And the edges too. Huh, apparently you have to split these ones apart to get them off. Interesting. Anyway, we can now go ahead and push down on these little center pieces and spin them around to the appropriate spot to take them off, just like that, and do that on all sides as well. And there we go. Perfect. So now we have corners, edges, centers, and the core. For the sake of maglev, we don't need to concern ourselves with any of this. We can just focus on the centers and the core. And speaking of the core, we're basically gonna have to throw this one away because it uses GAN's special interlocking mechanism to get these little nuts on there, and there's no way we're gonna be able to fit magnets on using this. Instead, we're gonna switch over to the tried and true screw and core mechanism. Of course, the way this normally works is you have a spring that goes on the screw, then you put your centerpiece on next, and then that screws into the core like this. But of course, this is a maglev 2x2, so we're gonna be swapping out this spring with two repelling magnets. Luckily, when I made my maglev square one, I bought a bunch of these extra little ring magnets, and these should fit on here perfectly. So we got two of them here. I'll flip one of them around like this and stick them both on, and there we go, they're repelling. I'll stick the centerpiece on like this, and then screw it into the core, and there we go, we have maglev. Well, okay, it's not quite that simple. For one, even if we were to screw the screw in all the way, this distance right here would still be way too big to work with the two by two. The centerpiece needs to be more like down here, which means we're gonna need to shorten things up a little bit. I think the way I'll do that is to just take a Dremel and chop off a little bit of the end of this screw and maybe chop off a little bit of the plastic on this core too, just to give myself a little bit more room. Of course, I also have five other screws that I'll do that with too. And through the magic of video editing, I'll show you as soon as I'm done. All right, the screws have been shortened. I've added maglev to all of them too. The core has has been shrunk down a little bit. Now all that's left is to assemble everything together. So put the centerpiece on like this and screw them all in and see if it's gonna work. All right, and here's the assembled core. So far, it's looking pretty promising. When I pull two opposite pieces apart like this, it seems to be at just the right radius like it was before. Of course, we can also adjust things with the screws if we need to, but let's go ahead and pop in an edge and see if it still fits in here. And yeah, that seems just about perfect. So I guess now we can go on through and finish assembling the entire two by two. And here we go. Here is the world's first maglev two by two. I mean, it looks and feels like a normal two by two from the outside. So let's do some first turns. And that feels, well, very similar to the original 2x2, to be honest. Now this cube was pretty airy and frictionless to begin with. I mean, it's called the Gin Air after all, but I can say that I do feel the effect of the maglev at least a little bit. It is pretty subtle, but it kind of just has more of a gliding feeling, like the pieces have even less friction between them. If I'm gonna be 100% honest though, even if I did improve the 2x2 in that way, I think I did actually make it slightly worse in a different way. Basically, if you look at any mass-produced cube with a screw and spring, or even maglev, you'll notice that right in the middle of the centerpiece, there's always a little tube that the screw fits into to kind of hold 
hold it in place and make it so it doesn't rock back and forth too much. Here's a pretty good example on the same cube that I got the core of this 2x2 from. As you can see, no matter what you do to the centerpiece, that screw is always staying in exactly the same place. But the thing about maglev, at least when you're doing it totally custom like this, is that there is nothing at all holding that screw or the magnets in place, and so if you rock that centerpiece back and forth, the screw is not going to hold it in place at all. And basically what that means for the cube's turning is that it's just going to be a little bit less stable. Now yeah, sometimes being flexible can help with the cube's turning, but in this case I think we've just gone a little bit too far, the whole thing feels almost a little bit floppy, and just not as confidence inspiring to turn as an unmodified GAN 2x2. I've also noticed that even though it has magnets, every time I finish a turn and set it down, it seems to be just not quite lined up perfectly. Anyway though, I do still like that sort of gliding, frictionless feel to the turning, so overall I'm going to call it kind of a wash, I made it better in one way and worse in another way. But you know what? The true victory here today is just being the first one to make a maglev 2x2. That was really the real goal in the first place. So yeah, needless to say, I would not quite recommend doing this on your 2x2, but at the very least, this adds to my ever-growing collection of maglev puzzles. Also, we learned that the Moyu Weilong maglev's cube is actually pretty darn good. There's also a lot of customization options that I didn't mention, and so for $20, I think it's actually a pretty good option, especially if you're into cube. You should definitely try it out. I'll put the link down in the description. You can get 5% off with discount code Z3Cubing. Anyway, yeah, that's pretty much it. I hope you all enjoyed as much as I did, and I'll see you guys next time.